Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to today's live stream. Sorry if my nose is a little red. I, uh, just doing a little bit of coke. Just kidding. Um, I, uh, <clears throat> have been blowing my nose because I'm sick. <laughs> um, I'm actually going to go get a COVID test at 3.45 today. So, woohoo. Um, hopefully it's, uh, hopefully it's just a cold, but, um, you know, you never know. And I figure it is uh, smart to check, as opposed to just keeping my head in the sand. So, um, so yeah, <clears throat> that's pretty much it. Nose beers. <laughs> um, yeah. So yeah, that's pretty much it. You know, I'm still because I'm sick, and I don't know if it's COVID yet or not. I still haven't been to the gym. You know, just being responsible. Um, yeah, haven't haven't been to the gym. Um, and uh, pretty much spent the morning hanging out with uh, the dog and, uh, you know, hanging out. Got a bunch of laundry done. As you can see, there's not near as much laundry on the bed behind me, the, the guest bed behind me. Um, just crap from uh, wedding showers and stuff. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much all that I've been up to this morning. Um, Something uh, that I thought was kind of funny, I was watching, did you guys see Fuad's podcast that he just put up? I think he put that one up today, uh, the new one. Today I was watching that while I was kind of doing stuff. And uh, one of the things that they... One of the things that they uh, uh, were talking about was that somebody... Um, somebody was like calling bullshit on the amount of trend that they used. And I don't think that they were talking about me, but I, I like, as far as I know, I'm the only person that I know that I've seen, you know, on YouTube, um, that has, uh, said that they've used two grams of trend before, you know, and I am not proud of it. I'm, I, I do not recommend it. I am an idiot for trying it. It was, it was, Seven years ago or so that I that I uh, attempted that, and um, they were talking about you know how some guy mentioned that he did two grams of trend in the comments, and if I'm using that, they're using way more. I never commented on the video, so I don't think that they were talking about me. But um, um, yeah, I, I don't know. It, it's uh, you know. As far as I know, though, I'm the only one that has uh, publicly admitted to being that stupid. So, um, yeah, I thought that that was funny that they were <clears throat> bringing that up and being like, what the fuck would it feel like if you were on two grams of trend? And, and Brett was like, your eyes would turn yellow, I'm sure. And uh, no, the eyes didn't turn yellow. Um, yeah, it, it, it honestly didn't. It honestly didn't feel any different than being on. It was weird, like, like I know it was legit because I homebrewed it myself, and uh, no, I mean, it, it's like, it's like up to a certain point, you know, you get, um, you get, well, I guess the big thing that's, that's really dumb is that I had, back then, like years, years ago, I never got blood work, I had no idea how terrible everything looked inside of me, um, so I don't really know the real, um, the real, uh, side effects of doing all of that. Um, but yeah, like I, the mental sides of things, like I don't remember it being, uh, a, a bad thing. Um, I mean, I was injecting three cc's of Tren every day. Um, I, I don't, I don't remember being in like an irritable mood. I don't remember any of that. I remember, I remember I, my boss asked what I was doing um, at the gym, and I told him, and he was like, your heart's going to explode. And I was like, I didn't say Clen, I said Tren. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so um, I, I, don't, I don't remember it being, like, that bad. Um, like, uh, I, I, uh, eyes certainly weren't yellow. Um, prolactin sky high. Again, no idea. <laughs> I didn't have any blood work. No idea. No idea. And there wasn't anything physical that I noticed um, that felt bad. I'm sure, I'm sure prolactin was high. I'm sure um, my blood pressure was high. I'm sure there was a lot of things that were um, going wrong. But, um, 
looking back at it, I don't remember, uh, you know, anything standing out to me that was like physically that I was like, you know, what the the only the only things were the the same things that I get on say uh, th- between 300 and 700 milligrams of tren a week, which at that dose um, I would go hypoglycemic very easily. Um, so that was really the only side effect that I noticed of doing two grams of Tren. So really, you know, the difference between, for me, the difference between, you know, 350, 700, 1,000, 2,000, it all seemed the same to me. No matter how much I was using, the only thing that was really, um, uh, really annoying that I noticed about it was just going hypo randomly. And that, that is te- a terrible feeling. Um, but yeah, I just thought it was funny that they brought up, uh, they brought up the fact that, uh, somebody had mentioned, I don't know, maybe one of them saw a video where I was talking about it. Um, I doubt it, but still, um, again, I, I'm not condoning it at all. It's absolutely a waste, a complete waste of trend. So, so stupid, uh, to do, to use that much. Um, so yeah, I just, uh, <laughs> I just thought it was funny that they started, saying that somebody had used two grams of Tran, and I was like, I haven't heard anybody ever mention that except me. <clears throat> Enigma, I made it myself. So, <laughs> um, no, it wasn't fake Tren. Everybody says, that, oh, it was fake, bro. I make my own. <laughs> I make it myself. Like, I know that it works. It works great at 350. It works great at 700. And, yeah, so... Um, take that exact same product and bump it up to a thousand or two thousand, and that was my experience. So, um, you're like, how do you make it yourself? Because I'm a fucking genius, <laughs> an idiot, an idiot genius that will abuse stupid drugs. Like I said, that was a long time ago. That was you know a fucking decade ago. Um, Enigma, it was tested. It was tested. Sorry, it was. It was. Sorry. You can say all you want, but it is what it is. It was real. Um, so moving on from the haters in the building, um, yeah, that was, uh, my experience with it. And, you know, like I said, I don't recommend it. It did not help. It didn't, it didn't, there's no benefit to using more. Um, you should absolutely, like, if you're going to mess with it, you can stick in the range of 50 to 700. (laughs) And even then I think 700 is way too much. Like personally, I'm never going to go, um, you know, I, I'm using 50 a week right now, and I think that that's just fine. So, um, no, you're using 50. Yeah, that's fake, bro. You're using 50. That's fake. <laughs> like, I'm using 50, and things are just fine. So, um, anyways, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's that. That's really the only thing I have to I have to talk on about my day. Um, so, what else? What's going on? T A M. Hello. Uh, I'm sure you've been asked this question a whole bunch of times. How do you feel about Clen? I think Clen is fine. Um, I think Clen is is fine. I'm on 40 micrograms right now. Um, I've taken it, you know, pre-contest. I've taken it all the way up to 120. I believe is the highest that we went, and you know, I wouldn't take it any higher than that ever. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't see a problem with it. I think it's a, I think it's a, a good product to include in, um, a, a stage where you're trying to lean out. Um, and I mean, there are anabolic properties to, <coughs> to it. You know, it does help build muscle. It helps maintain muscle. Um, you know, you could, there are a lot of situations where I think that it is, uh, something that is totally fine to use. So, people say Tren E gave them less side effects than Tren A. So, um, that's the opposite of my experience. Tren E, I got way more side effects than I ever did with Tren A. So, um, again, it's a very individual, uh, a very individual thing. You know, everybody's got to try everything for themselves and see what they think of it. So, Tren E gave me way worse side effects than Tren A. So, hello. Hello, Priscilla, Dungeon Master Mark. Thoughts on Losartan to keep hematocrit and blood pressure in check? Um, it, it certainly will help with that. Um, if, you, if, you, if you're somebody that has really bad um, 
blood pr blood pressure, really high blood pressure, then yes, I would say low sartan is definitely going to be a more um, a, a more effective ARB to use as opposed to tell me sartan. Uh, <clears throat> but if you're if your if your uh, blood pressure is in um, you know a, a good normal range, then yeah, I would say tell me sartan would be the uh, the the choice uh, to use. Um, you know, for keeping hematocrit in check and uh, and all the other benefits that we get from Tell Me Sartan. But um, yeah, I would say uh, I would say if you have a blood pressure issue, you would want to use a stronger blood pressure medication. And Low Sartan is definitely a stronger blood pressure medication, specifically for lowering blood pressure. Um, so, like that's the thing. Like if you if you've actually got some serious blood pressure issues then you definitely need to be using a blood pressure medication that's going to be very effective at getting that down because that's going to be more important than the benefits that we get from using Tell Me Sartan. So the thing is, is like, and you can't use two ARBs at the same time. Like that is a big no-no. You don't want to combine those. Um, so you can't use low sartan to keep your blood pressure down and then throw in Tell Me Sartan to get the benefits, um, you know, the physical benefits that we get from Tell Me Sartan. Like it doesn't work that way. So... If you have a problem, if you have a problem with blood pressure, absolutely use low sartan um, or azyl sartan. Uh, either one of those are very strong uh, ARBs. If you don't have blood pressure issues, if your blood pressure is, is relatively in check, like say if it's 130 over 85, tell me sartan will probably bring you down to 120 over 80. Um, it's it's pretty... It, Tell me Sartan is a very weak blood pressure medication, but that's not the main reason that we use it. We use it for all the other benefits that Tell me Sartan brings us. So I don't like to think of Tell me Sartan as a blood pressure medication. I like to think of it as, um, you know, something that's going to prevent um, our angiotensin from going up, which is going to uh, cause aldosterone to give us issues and bloating and, and water weight through that. I don't really care about the blood pressure, like how well it lowers blood pressure, because I mean, if you are healthy, your blood pressure should be relatively uh, good to go as is. Like if your blood pressure is uh, 120 over 80, there's no problem throwing Tell Me Sartan into the mix. It's not going to take you to unhealthy low levels of blood pressure. It's just not going to do that because it's not a very strong blood pressure medication. Again, the reason we use Tell Me Sartan is to get all the other benefits, <coughs> all the other benefits that we get from it, not the blood pressure lowering effect. You know, it does it a little bit, but it's just, it's not a very strong blood pressure medication. That's why if you go to the doctor and ask for a blood pressure medication, they're not going to give you Tell Me Sartan. They're going to give you Azyl Sartan or they're going to give you Low Sartan. Like those are the main options that they go for because they're strong. They work very well at lowering blood pressure. But again, we like Tell Me Sartan because it uh, helps burn visceral fat. It helps increase insulin sensitivity. Um, it helps, uh, it helps, um, with endurance. It, it has all these little things that help out, um, that, that low sartan does not help with that, uh, azyl sartan does not help with, um, the things that they all have in common, the things that pretty much all the ARBs have in common is that they will lower blood pressure to some degree, um, and that they are kidney protective to some degree. And then, uh, and then... Oh, shit, there's one more thing that I was going to say. Um, um, they, they all lower hematocrit to a degree and prevent left ventricular hypertrophy. But like that's the thing that they all will do uh, relatively well. Um, the difference is Tell Me Sartan has those other benefits that the others do not. That's why we uh, primarily try to go with that one as opposed to the other ones. But again, if you have a blood pressure issue, definitely, definitely, definitely pick a stronger blood pressure medication. Because that's going to be the most important thing, uh, is keeping that uh, under control. So, Sup, Goat? Hello, Kai Aaron. I hope you get well soon. Yeah, me too, man. Dungeon Master Mark, hope you feel better. Thanks. Yeah, I... I uh, the thing that made me really kind of, uh, you know, go get pushed to go get tested... Like I said at the start of this, I'm, I... I'm getting a COVID test done at 3:45. Um, not only do I have like a stuffy nose and and you know sneezing or whatever, but I've also got 
um, a case of the squirts. <laughs> like that's that's not uh, that's not good. That usually doesn't come with just a common cold. Um, diarrhea does not come with the common cold. Uh, not in my experience of getting colds. So that kind of pushed me over the edge to be like, okay, I think I need to go make sure that this is uh, is is just you know something that's not COVID, but you know, if it is, it is. And, uh, and if it is, then I can't do shit for like the next fucking 10 days or some shit. So, um, hopefully it's nothing. Hopefully it's fine, but better off checking than just keeping your head in the sand and potentially spreading it to other people. Um, like last night, uh, Jim, our, my dog, I don't know where he is. Uh, Jim had a, uh, a training session last night. We take him to training classes to make him a better dog. Um, and I didn't go because, I, I, like, Laura went with him on it on her own. Um, I didn't go because, who knows, like, if I did have COVID, I, why would I go to um, go to that and potentially spread it to the trainers there? Like, that's just, it's stupid. And tonight we actually have a dance lesson. And, uh, you know, I really want to go. Um, but, you know, again, uh, like, we'll see what the results say of the test I get. Um, hopefully it's, it's negative. Um, but we will see. We'll find out. You know, so far it's like, it's not that bad. Like, if it is COVID, like, it's not that bad. Um, like I have, like I said, my nose, I've been blowing that, um, you know, every couple hours and getting a lot out of it and uh and diarrhea like that's those are the two things i'm dealing with right now and um you know better check it out <laughs> so uh mental size of two grams grams of trend yeah like i said i've never really had like any crazy mental side effects from anything the only time that i remember being incredibly stressed is you know as far as like mental sides go was when uh was when um, was when I was on um, a, a lot of a lot of stuff, and I could feel that my blood pressure was high, and I was just I w I was a wreck, man. But that was on like three three and a half four grams of gear. Again, I haven't done any of these kinds of things. The like all these stupid <laughs> experiments I did were beyond five years ago. You know, it, it was a very, very long time ago that I messed around with um, uh, abusing steroids. And I will just, I'll say it again, it was not worth it. It didn't give me gains. I didn't blow up from it. It didn't do shit. It just made me, like, the only, the only things that I feel that I got with it was very high blood pressure, which caused, you know, that alone will cause anxiety and, and, uh, and just feeling like crap in general. Um... Um, the two grams of trend, like it didn't, uh, like when I did that, I did it on its own. <laughs> I used nothing else, like completely foolish. Just that was it. I did three cc's of trend every day. Um, and I didn't notice anything from it, like anything, anything, uh, anything positive. Um, you know, anything positive that you wouldn't have gotten from say 350 to 700 milligrams of trend. Um, you know, the thing is, is like, your body can only use so much. Your body can only utilize so much. And back then, I was not 240 and lean. Back then, I was like 200 and relatively lean. Um, but I definitely was not big enough to even handle 700 milligrams of trend, you know? So um, I feel like that's the reason why I didn't really notice any <laughs> bigger changes in my physique. Because you can only use so much, you know? So more is not better. More is just more. Um, anyways, cluster bomb plus grunt plus AML. What's AML? I don't know what AML means. AML. Aminos? No, that's grunt. Grunt's an amino. I don't know what you're talking. What's AML? <clears throat> Anybody know what that means? Cluster bomb and grunt and 
AML. Post-workout has been an absolute game changer. Thanks for putting me on that. You're welcome. I'm not, I don't know what AML stands for. Unless that was like a typo or something. Um, I have no idea. What's a good starter dose to try on a recomp cycle? Never used it before, but we'll be trying it soon. Advanced molecular labs? <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't know if that's what he means. I've, I've never put those words together. <laughs> Um, anyways, um, what's a good starter dose for Trend? Like I said, I'm on 50 milligrams a week right now, and things, like, I don't notice any negatives to it. I think that it is helping, um, with, uh, you know, um, um, insulin sensitivity and, uh, and, uh, helping push the carbs that I eat to the right areas, um, on just 50 milligrams, you know. The, 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 the old therapeutic dose of Trend was 50 to 150 milligrams per week. It's a real brand, that's what he meant. I never, it's not a brand that I use. I mean, I'm, I'm Redcon 1 and those uh, supplements, Cluster Bomb, Grunt, those are Redcon 1 supplements, so I, I don't know what AML means. So, um, but yeah, uh, I, I mean, if you're, it's your first time getting into it, like 50 to 150 milligrams of trend per week is uh, the old therapeutic dose, um, which, means that that is what was used to be prescribed with it <laughs> um which is crazy but um it's what they it's what they used to prescribe for it because it was effective at those dosage at 50 to 150 um so the whole thing about people saying 350 is the starter dose or, or whatever i think that that's uh excessive i don't think that that's absolutely necessary at all um so, yeah, you could absolutely start with a really low dose, you know, 50 to 150. It's going to do its job just fine. Remember, more is not better. More is just more. You know, you can only handle so much. You're only going to be able to do so much. And then from there, once you start to experience side effects from it, like, that's bad. You should not be experiencing side effects from anything that you use. And if you do, that's bad. That's a bad thing. That doesn't mean that it's good. That doesn't mean your gear is good because you're experiencing side effects. That doesn't mean shit. That means you're experiencing side effects, and that's a bad thing. You know, you shouldn't judge your compounds based on side effects. You know, and I feel like that's... You know, I've talked about this before. Like, I, I think that's an awful way to go about <laughs> deciding whether or not your gear is good or not based on how you feel and if you're feeling the side effects. You're like, yeah, this is great. I'm going hypoglycemic every meal. Feels fucking awesome. It's, it's the best. Or, or not awesome, but you're like, I feel like shit. It's working great. Like, that doesn't... That's stupid. <laughs> that's stupid. Like, why would you want these side effects coming on like no matter how much you use it's going to do its job it's going to do what it was intended to do no matter how much you put into the system you know it's going to keep doing it whether you're feeling it or not and i just i think that guys just get too caught up in wanting to feel like they're on something instead of just feeling normal and just slowly getting stronger and leaner and, and whatever as they continue to use it so a good starter dose for trend, you know, I, uh, if you're, if you're really trying to recomp, I mean, I, first of all, I think that that's uh, kind of a waste of time uh, to think about, but, you know, regardless, you're going to do what you want to do anyways, so um, I would say 150. I think 150 would be a, a great start. Um, you could do 50 milligrams Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, that'd be, you know, most Trend Ace is dosed at 100 milligrams per milliliter. That would be half a milliliter, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I think that that would be a great place to start and, and, and stay, you know, because even if you aren't feeling it, that doesn't mean it's not doing its job. Just like caffeine. Just, just because you aren't feeling the buzz from your caffeine, that doesn't mean you need more. It's, going, it's still doing exactly what it's always done. You've just adjusted to not feeling that buzz from it anymore. It's still doing all the metabolic processes that 300 milligrams of caffeine will always do. You're just not feeling it the same way. Like, that doesn't mean use more. That doesn't mean use more. It's just, it's, I, I think it's ridiculous and stupid how so many of us think that you need to be feeling something to know that it's working or not. Uh, it's just, 
it's 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 an addict type of uh, thought process, and it just leads to becoming more uh, addicted and abusive of anything that you're using if you're going on feeling. Same thing with alcohol. I don't feel one beer anymore. Well, that doesn't mean it's not doing what alcohol does to your insides. You're just adjusted to it. And then it's like, well, I'm going to have two beers. Uh, two beers makes me feel drunk now. Well, no, I don't get drunk off two beers anymore. I'm going to have three beers now. No, I don't get drunk off three beers anymore. I'm going to have seven beers. Like, it's the same fucking thing. People going for the feeling, which I know people use alcohol to, to get that, you know. Um, but it's like... Uh, uh, people drinking for the antioxidants, like a glass of wine for the antioxidants of it. And they're like, well, I don't really feel one glass of wine anymore. Maybe that's not enough antioxidants. So they're like, oh, I'm going to have two glasses of wine, three glasses of wine, and, and just keep going for getting drunk. And eventually it just goes uh, out of control to where it's like you can have 10 beers and feel normal. And uh, that's not what we want. That's not what we want. We don't want people to be abusing these drugs just so that they get a feeling of it. You know, like feeling like Superman is not smart. You don't want to feel like Superman. That's what gets you fucking hurt. So anyways, <clears throat> Priscilla beginner, 1.5 years lifting. Do you recommend wearing a belt? No, I don't recommend wearing a belt at all. Like I've worn belts. I've been in many videos where I'm wearing a belt, but you know, when it comes down to it, a uh, belt is absolutely not necessary. It's not. I, I mean, it, I feel like it's more of a comfort thing for people to be um, using it, but it's not necessary. Um, it, yeah, I just, unless you're like a power lifter or something like that, and, and you know, all of that is the, the amount of weight that you lift for one rep is most important, then, yeah, I think that that would be um, a fine reason to do it. But if you're, you know... A person just trying to improve your physique, you know, lifting the way that we lift, doing higher rep stuff, you know, eight reps to, to fucking 30 reps of different things. No, I don't think that there is a reason to use a belt. I think that going without a belt is going to help uh, strengthen your back, strengthen your core, strengthen everything, you know, anyways. Like like I said, if you're, if you're not a power lifter or a strong man, it's just... It's not, it's not, we don't need it, you know, um, and that, that's coming from somebody that used a belt for a long time. Um, it, it's not necessary, you know, it's just, it's just not necessary. Can you briefly go over how to go about changing pinning frequency for a short while? Say, for example, traveling and changing frequency from daily to going on vacation for six days. Um, it, you would go, sh sure, um, you're overthinking it, first of all, um, just keep doing your daily pins up until, you know, the day that you're going to leave, and then that morning, I wouldn't pin a week's worth all in one day, I'd probably pin half a week's worth, or just don't pin fucking anything, <laughs> and just give yourself six days off, because it's really not going to matter at all. You're not going to notice a difference. Anything, anything that you notice is going to be in your fucking head. You know, you're not actually going to shrink. You're not actually going to have any, any issues at all. And if you do, it's in your fucking head. It's just, it's the same thing as taking six days off from the gym and not working out. You're not going to shrink. You're not going to lose shit. <laughs> like you're gonna be fine and people that think the other way I mean you you need a therapist because that's a problem like that's not you're thinking uh, you're thinking foolishly but um, if you're really like if you can't get past that mental uh, side of things and think that it is absolutely gonna make a difference then what I would recommend is take um, you could take three days worth uh, that morning so like if you're pinning half a milliliter every single day then you could do, you know, two milliliters the day, the day that you leave for your vacation. And that will help keep your levels slightly more elevated so that when you get back, um, sure, you'll be a little bit, your hormone levels for those drugs will be slightly down, 
But once you jump right back into pinning your half a milliliter every day, things will go right back to where they were. Will you notice anything in this time period of, of you know, six days of not injecting anything? No, you're not going to notice shit. So, um, yeah, if you're, if you're that scared of it, then absolutely, um, absolutely take, you know, three or four days worth in one day when you leave. Um, but if not, then yeah, just, just don't do it. Like when I, when, when we go on our honeymoon, uh, from December 20th to December 30th, I'm not taking anything. I'm just going to fucking drop it all. I'm not going to take anything. I'm not going to take a big shot of anything. I'm just going to cut it off, cut it off on the 19th and fuck it. Like, that's it. Like, I'm not going to take any drugs with me. I'm not going to take anything like that at all. I'm not going to take HGH. I'm not going to take anything. I'm just going to go. Just gonna go, enjoy myself, come back, and uh, go on TRT, <laughs> and uh, and that's gonna be it. So, um, yeah, it, it's it's not it's not that big a deal. You're not gonna lose anything. You're not gonna notice anything. You're gonna be just fine. Um, when I came off of when I, when I come off of a cycle uh, to go into like a cruise phase, I go four weeks without injecting anything at all anything at all and the only thing that i notice from the moment that i stop up until about four weeks those three weeks that i'm injecting nothing i just feel better and better and better and better and better and then at about four weeks i start to feel like something is off and that's when you start your cruise dose so it takes a while for you to physically mentally notice that something is off but when i'm not injecting anything everything just feels better and better and better and better as you go along so that's my experience that's what i'm going to do when i am 10 days out of the country um that's what i'm going to do and and i recommend you chill and enjoy it enjoy not having to do your injections enjoy just not worrying about it you know these are not things that we should be obsessed about Especially if you're not con trying to be a professional, you know, if you're, if you're like me and any other average Joe, it's not that big a deal. It's not going to make or break your progress. Don't, don't overstress it. I want to blast and cruise for life. Well, that's not, that's not what anybody should do. Um, but I'm in a situation where I'm going to have to PCT. Do you recommend HCG with my cruise dose up until I'm about to PCT? Um, I don't. I will not. Uh, like, I'm not the person to be asking this. I don't use HCG. I haven't used HCG, and I never will use HCG, and I won't ever be PCT. So, um, no, I would never use that. If you're using it, if you're if you're saying that you need to do this for fertility reasons, then I would not recommend HCG. I would recommend HMG. HMG. It's way more potent at bringing back your sperm, making you way more fertile than HCG ever is. And uh, yeah, you don't have to come off uh, anything for that. You don't have to PCT. You can stay on your cruise. You can stay on fucking cycle and get your significant other pregnant. I don't like I'm, I'm just that's usually the only reason that people say that they need to do this is because it's time to make a baby. Um, I. Uh, yeah, HMG is, is what you want. HCG is not what you want. Um, if you need to know where to get HMG for a decent price, then you need to sign up for my unlimited email membership, and I will send you my pharmacy source that ships worldwide quickly. Uh, do you know a good fertility protocol to administer while well, on TRT? <laughs> well, you know, back to back. Um, yeah, HMG. <laughs> Throw H HMG in the mix. Do I know the doses of it? No, I do not. That's not something that I know off the top of my head because that's not something that I'm worried about um, right now. Uh, so, but yeah, when it's time, HMG is what I'm going to use for my fertility protocol. If you want to know a deeper dive on a fertility protocol, I made a video like two years ago. It was like my last video of the year two years ago. Um, and it's literally in the title. It says fertility protocol. So if you just go to uh, YouTube and type in, yeah, and look at that. It just pops up on its own. If 
you type in Chase Irons Fertility Protocol, see I just went to, to F, <laughs> Fertility Protocol, boom. My TRT Fertility Protocol. This is what I would do, um, you know, if you're trying to hit it at all angles, and it's, it's, not, it's not at the start of the video. Where is it at? Um, do I even have timestamps in this thing? No, I don't. Uh, if you look down in the comments, I think, I think this is probably where it's at, I feel. How long is this video? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's probably right here, is my guess. Do we do this? First of all, there does not seem to be any significant harm or reduction in fertility oh, yeah. when using TRT. So, um, yeah, 18 minutes in, 18.45 um, is kind of where the fertility talk starts. Everything else, because this is like a QA and a where I'm, I'm answering a whole bunch of different questions uh, like this, you know, going through everything and, and answering and... It's not until the point of there. There we go. So, yeah. Um, if you want to see that, just just fucking YouTube it. Um, I did a lot of research to answer this one. So, um, yeah. Off the top of my head, HMG is the main thing that you want. Um, but, again, I, it's not something that I'm concerned about right now. So, it's not something that I know a ton about. So... Yeah, somebody mentioned the whole Q&A of Kamal saying that he did a PCT. Um, guess what? Pros lie. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. Pros lie. Um, and if he's doing a PCT, it, he probably just means he's coming off of everything, not actually doing a PCT, because nobody in their right mind that's a professional would actually do a real PCT, because it's a complete waste of time. It is a complete waste of time. If you are a pro... No coach is going to recommend to do a legitimate PCT unless they don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Because what good is it to bring back your testosterone levels just to shut them down again? Like, if Kamal is completely done with bodybuilding, if he's completely done, completely given up on it, and is no longer doing it anymore, that's the only reason to do a PCT. Like, if you're not going to do TRT for life, that's the only reason to do a PCT. Otherwise, it's a complete waste of time to bring back your natural testosterone levels just to shut it all down again. Like, that doesn't mean anything. It's just fucking stupid. That's all that it is, is just fucking stupid. Say it with me. Just fucking stupid. And if true, I mean, he, whoever's telling him to do that is fucking stupid. Do you know a good... Oh, where already did that. It's, people say trend E. Oh, yeah, where already did that. I'm going for a lean bulk on TRT dose of test. Would 20 milligrams of Anabar be sufficient? I mean, yeah, that's, that's a fine dose. It's, it's nice and low and safe. Um, yeah, it, it's totally fine. Starting to cut in the next few months. Instead of 600 tests, would 400 tests, 200 mass be better? For the hardening effect, well, there is no hardening effect. Getting harder is... <laughs> getting harder just comes from cutting, in general. No drug just makes you harder. Um, I've heard Fuad say that, and it's just... It's, that's the bro and him talking. Um, the hardening comes from your diet. It doesn't come from your drugs. Um, <laughs> would it be better for a hardening... I mean, it would be better just to have, uh, just to be hitting your body from different angles with different products. Um, so, like, if if it were me, what I would do, like, 600 milligrams total is is a fine dose. I would drop it down even more and do 200 test, 200 primo, and 200 masteron. And I think that that would be an even better, um, uh, a better use of your 600 milligrams. Um, you know, and then as you get even deeper, you know, you could take it to 200. Test 200 Primo, 100 Master on 100 Trend, and uh, and get even more bang for your buck out of your 600 milligrams. So that's my uh, that's my strategy on it is to spread stuff out as much as possible to hit everything from different angles. So.
Would you use Tommy Sarton even if blood pressure was not an issue? Yes, absolutely. That's the drug. That's the one to use if blood pressure is not an issue. Abnormal blood pressure. I want to decrease bloat. Absolutely. That is that is going to be the perfect product for you. Yes, that is that is exactly what you want. Twenty bar is a pretty low dose. I mean, it's it's considered part of the clinical dose they use. It's effective, is the thing, and that it's studied and tested and effective. Twenty milligrams is fine, and you'll be very healthy with it. Forty milligrams, again, it's fine. Twenty, forty, it's fine. Wouldn't you want your um, um, pills to go two times longer though, and just use twenty instead of forty? You know, you're not going to notice a difference between twenty and forty. You're not. You're not going to notice a difference. I got lucky. My blood pressure only went up five to ten points on test. My primo antibar cycle, but my diet is on point. Yep. Do you like warming up hamstrings before squatting? Yes, I tend to do at least um, a. Uh, I tend to do at least like one type of um, hamstring exercise to get them woken up uh, before doing compound lifts. Um, will you make an update video of your complete supplement stack? I mean, it really hasn't changed much. So, I mean, yeah, but it's not, it's not much different. Uh, my issue is high blood pressure. I started with lisinopril. Yeah, lisinopril is not, uh, not what we want. I would get losertain. Uh, what's up for days? Good. Thank you. It is as good as it can be. I'm 10 foot. Five. Um, yeah, you'll never make it, bro. Sorry. Uh, annually, how much do you spend on blood test screen, etc.? Um, it's about four hundred dollars per test, so uh, twelve hundred dollars or so. Probably fifteen hundred if you throw in uh, some other random tests done. So yeah, probably fifteen fifteen hundred dollars a year. Uh, currently taking Cialis and L-carnitine, which dropped my blood pressure to 100 over 60, which I usually have slightly high blood pressure. Would you rather take Tell Me Sartin or Cialis and L-carnitine? I would rather take Tell Me Sartin as opposed to Cialis and L-carnitine. I would take Tell Me Sartin on its own. I would drop the Cialis. Um, you could even keep L-carnitine in there because it doesn't really do a whole lot as far as like blood pressure goes. Um, so yeah, I would say Tell Me Sartin and L-carnitine would be better than um, Cialis and L-carnitine. Um, why blast and cruise? Why not just one dose steady for at least a year? I mean, that's what I'm, that's what I was going to tell. They get, like, that's why I laughed when he said blast and cruise. Um, yeah, uh, I think if you're focusing mostly on health, then yeah, you should just stick with super low doses and not blast and cruise. How long did it take you to get 22 inch arms? Um, like six months. So good luck with that. That reminds me of a guy who told me he ran 500 trend with DMP, said how great it was. I was like, yeah, no thanks. Yeah, that's, that. Uh, yeah, that would be stupid. At which point do you cut gear before a show? Um, you cut out all injections basically a week before because you don't want to potentially do a bad shot um, and have a lump. You know, and, and stopping all your gear a week before show, besides like the orals, is going to reduce your uh, inflammation significantly. So it's going to help you drop a bunch of water, um, not injecting anything, because every steroid that you inject increases inflammation and increases water. Even Masteron increases water. Even Tren increases water. They all increase water. The, the way to be as dry as possible is inject nothing. That's going to be the ultimate in, in water, in, in no bloat. So you inject nothing um, for that reason and for the potential that you could have a bad shot and then a lump and a bruise on stage, and that does not look good. So, yeah, a week out. Yeah, they all, they all go. Any, any injections end, and you just stick with the orals. By the way, your question to me yesterday on how much lean body mass you gained from from the 40 pounds uh, 
versus October. I think you gained zero. Correct. <laughs> um, good afternoon. How's it going? It's going good. Do you think leg extensions are overrated? No. Carterine for weight loss. Thoughts. Um, stupid. Just use diet and, uh, and your other drugs. I heard from someone it increased their cardio by 20%. Oh, yeah? Did they measure that? Did they actually measure out 20%, bro? No. It's not 20% increase in their cardio. Um, that's, that's just an idiot spitting out numbers to make you be an idiot with him so that he feels better about his drug abuse. So, no. Um, no. Carterine is stupid. It's not something that any of us should use. Um, you know, the legal version of Carterine, the prescribed version of Carterine, is actually Tell Me Sartin. So I would pick Tell Me Sartin over Car Car Carterine uh, any day. For cycles, expectations as someone who is 172 pounds max, one, what? Your, your bench press? What? What are you talking about? <laughs> okay, I expect to gain five pounds of lean body mass, water plus muscle per month on 500 milligrams of test. Lean bulk, realistic? No. For most people, <laughs> sorry, I'm not. <laughs> no, the answer is no. Five pounds, realistic? No. Um, you know, it's not going to be lean mass that's added. It's not. It's just not. So, good luck with that. It's, it's not. <laughs> Five pounds a month? No, it's not. Um, for most people, does test still give an enhanced look by itself? Um, yes. Like Scott Herman. Um, it, it, I mean, it depends on how much you use. Like if, you, if you stick to a TRT dose, like maybe Scott Herman does, then yeah, you'll just have a basic natty look. But if you're using, say, 300 milligrams of test, yeah, it can help you look more enhanced because you'll be able to build more muscle than what's normal. Ah, uh, Monster Mesh, I completely disagree with you there. Couldn't disagree more. You can do just fine on testosterone alone. And if you can't, it's probably because your diet sucks and your training sucks. Can I get Tummy Sartan and Cartopil? I don't know what Cartopil is, um, but yes, you can get Tummy Sartan from the online pharmacy that we work with. Can I? Can you send me the link? N no. Uh, can you sign up for the unlimited email membership? Then yes. So sign up for the unlimited email membership, which it's right in front of your fucking face. Join my membership right there. Type that in, go to it, sign up for the unlimited email membership. No, it's not the $2 membership. It's the $25 membership. You need more subs. Thanks. Go get them. <laughs> um, adding 50 milligrams of T-ball, on the other hand, shoulders got round. Uh, I completely doubt that. Again, this, 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 this idea that this kind of stuff happens, it's all in your fucking head. You know, It's probably because you just had a shoulder pump and you were like, fucking T-ball. No, dude, it has nothing to do with that. You probably ate pizza the night before and had a good workout the next day and was like, oh, look at my fucking 3D delts. Says the 172-pound guy. Like, give me a fucking break. I watched a live stream Q&A of, yeah, we already discussed that liar. I was sick with your symptoms for three weeks. I went to the gym despite not feeling 100%. Ended up with heavy chest pain. Had a panic attack yesterday because I couldn't breathe properly. Well, there you go. That's why I am staying home. When you used EQ, did you notice increasing hunger or not? No, I did not notice increasing hunger. Um, did you go over your blood results of your clinical dose cycle? No, I have not. Do you prefer T-ball or VAR? No. <laughs> Me, neither. <laughs> no, I prefer VAR over any other oral. I think that VAR is going to be the safest option for us. And um, with everything going on in the world that is going on, I think that uh, yeah, you should be as safe as possible. You know, well, like, that's, that's what everybody needs to be focusing on right now is not dying. <laughs> like, that's, uh, that's the name of the game at this point is let's live longer and still stay slightly enhanced. <laughs> How about that? If you're pinning 100 milligrams of test E, what's the actual test you are getting? Is it 6%? I mean, that's not something to 
concern yourself with. I mean, that's that's kind of what uh, is is stated that you know the ester takes up a, a large percent of um, the grams of the product. Um, so yeah, but it's nothing that I've ever concerned myself with and and noticed a, a big issue with my test levels being off so much. Like that's not something that you should concern yourself with. Yes, it's true, but that's again. Don't take 500 tests thinking that it's only going to be 300 tests going through your system, you know, of test E. Like, that, that's, not, that's, not, that's not something worth worrying about. What's up, Aaron? I couldn't come up with a name. Any resources you can recommend for beginners to educate themselves on gear, nutrition, lifting? Yes, my channel. Watch it. Been watching your videos of More Place, More Dates and Jeff Nippard. I'd probably ditch Jeff Nippard, but if you can recommend anything even better. Um, yes, my channel, More Place, More Dates. Um, um, Vigorous Steve is a good channel. Um, and then I would say uh, um, watch any uh, Victor Black videos. Watch any John Jewett videos. Yeah, we're, I feel like we're all kind of on the same page. Um, thyroid tests are, are flustering. Okay. Um, what do you think about putting testosterone up the bum? Um, if that's, uh, if that's what you want to do, then do it. Um, personally, I would rather not have my test levels that high. That's not what I'm going for. Um, I literally stated, I want you to see these videos in my comments, bro. I don't know. Um, best supplements to bring blood pressure down. Blood pressure medication. <laughs> blood pressure medication. <laughs> nothing will beat, nothing will beat a strong ARB. Supplements? No, it's a complete waste of fucking time. Um, if you've got, uh, if you've got real blood pressure issues, get on Losartan, get on Azulsartan, one of those, and you'll be fine. Don't waste your time. Don't waste your money with trying to pick supplements that are going to help that, you know, come around because it's just going to be a big fucking waste of time. It said that trend increased E2 receptor sensitivity E2 and decreased DHT by binding to alpha-5 reductase and prevent test to DHT conversion. So is test and trend cycle good or you need mass? You don't need mass. Test and trend work just fine on their own. <clears throat> that being said... I still am a proponent of hitting things from all angles, so um, I would have a little bit of everything in there. So, um, is it necessary? No, but again, like I recommend having a little bit of everything in there. Would you consider 550 sust and 200 trend aggressive? No, that's not aggressive at all. I think that's a relatively decent dose. I wouldn't say it's pushing too much for a cut. I think that, that that's totally normal. Um, blah, 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 pound of fish, nobody cares, I'm 50, yeah, okay, um, let's, let's just, uh, let's just hide this person, he's no fun. <clears throat> Thanks for watching, buddy. Low libido when dieting, back to my ravenous, horny self while bulking. Um, nobody wants to hear about that, Mason, that's gross. Moving on, does metformin inhibit muscle gains? No. Um, I'm going to run 500 to 600 tests. I just want a little enhancement look. Not some freak of nature. Also, do you still do two sets on your exercises? Yes, two sets is pretty much all that I do. Yes. <clears throat> does high blood pressure interfere with creatinine and EGFR? Yes, absolutely. High blood pressure fucks your kidneys which will show in your creatinine and EGFR blood work. So, yes. I couldn't find solid answers on this. I only got down to 13% body fat. Yeah, um, it's, it's going to be independent person to person. If you spend a long time in a deficit, that's definitely going to cause libido issues, regardless of how low a body fat percentage you got to. So... Um, blah, blah, blah. Vigorous Steve, Victor Blank, John Jewett. Copy that. Yes. Um, since started learning, got smaller and kind of small. I can't imagine training full body five times a week. Do you think 40 milligrams of anabar plus TRT is as powerful 
for gaining lean muscle, muscle mass as a 500 test. Um, do I think it's as powerful? No, absolutely not. The other day I saw a Reddit post about a 17 year old and 700 trend thousand test and 10 super draw. These people babbling about high doses and gear use are not serving a good purpose. I mean, the thing is like, all that we can do is keep telling them that it's not better. <laughs> it's just, it's just not better to use higher doses, but people are going to do what they want to do, you know? And, and I mean, I was in the same boat fucking five to 10 years ago. That's, uh, I thought it was all drugs. You have to learn things the hard way, you know, especially when you're young and dumb. You know, 10 years ago, I was 25 and uh, thought I was invincible and could do anything. And um, yeah, abused, abused drugs because I thought the game was all drugs. And I learned the hard way, you know, that's that's going to be the way that most people are going to learn. Like nobody wants to listen especially when you're that age, you don't want somebody to tell you what to do, especially, I mean, it's just kind of the way, the way that we are, you know? So unfortunately, most people are going to learn the hard way or either die and not learn at all. Um, yeah, it's pretty rare that people will actually listen to the advice from the old man that has been there and done that, you know? You hear way more I told you so's than good job, son. <laughs> I don't know why, but for me, T-ball makes me look a bit leaner, more vascular. Okay, there we go. Anyways, 39 viewers, 17 likes. Yeah, like it. <laughs> so next time when I cut, now being on test, you think I run into this problem again? Um, again, yeah, you'll lose your libido when you are getting deep into a deficit, deep into a cut. Test or no test. Um, and it is pretty individual of the person, but... You know, it's just, there's there's no set answer on that. It's, it might be a little less likely, but it still could absolutely happen. Does tummy sergeant have an, have an effect on improving lipids like carterine or less than carterine? <clears throat> yes, it has an improvement on lipids, just like carterine. They're basically nearly the same product. The only thing is carterine gave the rats... Cancer and tell me Sartan did not. I'm getting into fitness and I'm trying to educate myself as much as I can. It can be annoying because there's tons of fitness people out there putting out info, which lead to info overload. That is a sound comment. If you don't see much from testosterone, you won't see anything from any steroid. Maybe you just suck at taking steroids. <laughs> What's the highest dose you've ever ran your test at and for what length of time? Uh, 1250, 1250 milligrams of test per week. Um, I did that for a solid cycle. Um, and it was fine. I, I didn't have any, uh, I didn't have any issues uh, with it. Um, and this was run, what was it? It was 1250 test, 600 NPP and 600 Primo was the cycle. And I thought it was fine you know i didn't make any more gains than i have on half the dose <laughs> um i mean i didn't i didn't notice any any you know super negative side effects like that cycle was actually run within the last three years so um yeah it was it was uh, probably 20 weeks long uh, about um but yeah really I didn't have, like, that was without an AI. There was no AI in place. Estrogen was probably nice and high, which is a good thing. It helps things grow um, and keeps your brain uh, uh, healthy because that's what estrogen does for us. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that, that's it. A wise man learns from others' mistakes. Yeah, unfortunately, there are not many wise men out there. I make great gains on my TRT and crazy gains on T-Ball. You mentioned you're taking ephedrine. Uh, are you taking an ECA stack right now? No, I'm not. I actually stopped taking ephedrine. I've given it a break. Um, yeah, I'm not using it anymore. 
Um, when I was, I was doing EC. I wasn't using aspirin. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I'm taking a break from it considering, um, I'm not, uh, not, not working out. And, uh, I actually stopped like last week just to take a break from it because I mean, uh, ephedrine is an amphetamine. It is something that you can become addicted to. It is something that will cause with withdrawal symptoms if you use it for too long too much for too long. That being said, I never used more than 50 milligrams a day, um, which is a relatively low dose, considering way back in the day I used to abuse the fuck out of Broncade. Um, uh, taking, like, five pills of that a day, which they're dosed, I think they're 25 milligrams per pill. I would take I would take a dose every fucking three hours, um, starting at 6 a.m., <laughs> all the way to, like, 6 p.m., so I never really had a problem with Broncade, you know, even though I used it that high, but um, just... For the sake of uh, being careful, no, I, I stopped using ephedrine just to take a good break from it. But I was on it for, what, like nine weeks or so, and I, I did like it. I think it's great. It's just, you want to be careful, you want to be careful with uh, with everything, you know. But ephedrine is an amphetamine. I mean, people make meth out of it. Um, it's not something that, it's something that you definitely want to be careful with, and... Uh, yeah, it's it's not something that should be used uh, permanently, that's for sure. Um, so. How do you like it? I mean, I liked it. I definitely liked it. But, um, yeah, it, it definitely, um, you know, it definitely gave more energy for sure. Um, that being said, oh, you didn't even mention injectable. Yeah, it was injectable ephedrine. Um, it was very good. It's way, way more potent than, uh, the pill for sure. Um, I thought it was, I thought it was, it was very good for energy. Um, but yeah, you've got to, you got to be careful with amphetamines. <laughs> In your experience, do you notice any lipid improvements on Tell Me Sartan? Didn't we just talk about that? Yes. 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 Uh, ever notice heart palpitations? No. I haven't had heart palpitations in a long time. Um, the last time that I had heart palpitations was, you know, again, in that period of five to ten years ago when I was abusing everything and then was abusing, went on a, a, a spurt of abusing T3. Yeah, that'll do it. Um, I was using, it was 125 to 150 micrograms of T3 daily and uh, not fun. But no, I haven't had any issues with that in the last five years at least, so... By using PEDS, you'll have a certain look, especially with some compound like Tren, etc. But when you stop, you'll lose this look or some of it. So what are compounds that you can use year-round and not have health issues? Um, serious health issues. Um, yeah, so... Here's your question. Compounds that you can use year-round and not have serious health issues. Well, um, the only things that I would say would be okay to use year-round would be small doses of testosterone, Primo, and Masteron. Everything else, I say, is off-limits for year-round use. And like as far as like dosing goes of those three compounds, I mean, I think that you would be completely fine going year-round doing, say, um, 200 uh, test, 200 Primo, and 100 Masteron. I think you could go year-round like that with no problems at all. Um, but that's it. And, and, and growth hormone. Do I use a growth hormone daily? No problems. you spoke astragalus and grapeseed extract helped to improve the kidney function yes and lowered the creatinine levels yes how long did it take you how long it took for you can be please tell um uh, a solid month of using say eight grams of astragalus daily is very effective a month of using eight grams of astragalus daily is very effective and spread that shit out say take two grams four times a day you know, or take a gram and a half with every meal 
Like that's that's kind of the best way to go about doing it is spread it across your entire day. So I saw an informative video the other day of a very popular YouTube channel with like two million subs, and it was about what to do with your life, and it mentioned that the average person dies at 82. How many years do you think Roids takes off that number? Um, I mean, it depends on how hard you go, you know. Yeah, I, I would say, yeah, probably the average person lives into their 80s. You know, that does, uh, <laughs> that, that does nothing, um, does no steroids, and probably doesn't work out hardly at all, <laughs> um, you know. So, you know, I think there are a lot of things that we do that are very healthy, that add years to our life outside that the the average individual doesn't do but again yeah i think it it balanced it gets balanced out by using steroids so um that being said if you're an abuser of steroids long term i think that it could take 10 years off your life absolutely um but the thing is is like it depends on how long you abused how long you keep abusing how long you keep using elevated doses or if you say stop, uh, stop chasing Psy. Like the other thing is like how big you are. You know, if you, I would say like if you have your fun up until you're about 40 and back off, downsize, and stay with TRT and, you know, maybe once a year throw in a little bit of Primo, maybe a little bit of Anavar, but that's it just to, you know, do that, but you're, say, you downsize to, say, 180 to 200 pounds, I wouldn't, uh, I would say somebody absolutely could, um, you know, still get to, say, 80, 80 years old, no problem. You know, everybody's, it's, it's just, it's something that is unpredictable and uh, very individual, you know, I mean, if you if you're gonna die of cancer anyway, like you're, you're yeah, you're it, there's nothing that you're gonna prevent um, from that happening, you know. So it's just everything's very individual, you know. Um, but I would say you know if you if you backed off and downsized and kept your doses extremely small, um, yeah, for at, at the age of forty and on, um, you'll live. Uh, I. I I would say that I wouldn't be surprised people living 80 years beyond 80 years old. It's when you keep going into deep into your 40s, deep into your 50s, that you are probably causing some serious problems because your shit is running itself into the ground at that point. So, and that's the, that's the point where I'm at. I mean, I'm 35 years old now. I'm, I'm already scared to death of all these people dying that are only like 10 years older than I am. Um, that kept going, um, I, uh, I, I do not want that, you know? So I'm at the point where I'm like, okay, let's start backing off. Let's start bringing things down. Let's start focusing primarily on health, but I can still look really fucking good and still get shredded here and there <laughs> and, uh, still be better than the average individual. Yes. There's going to be 5% of the population that are still blasting, uh, gear that's going to look better than me, but you know what? I played that game already. It was fun, but I don't. I don't need it anymore. You know, it's kind of like the thing, uh, like in college. Like I partied my ass off in college, to the point where it's like I don't really need that anymore. Like I had my fun. I, I did. I did all that. I mean, like I feel like that's a reason why I don't really care to have a bachelor party. Like I've had my fun. I've partied harder than most people, and I. I don't. I don't need it anymore. Like I just. There's. There's no point to it for me so um so yeah moving on any thoughts on using dried fruit powder such as pomegranate and other fruits versus juice or eating the fruit whole i appreciate you taking the time to share your knowledge with us mortals oh i'm definitely still mortal uh any thoughts on dried fruit powder i mean that would be a situation where if you are um if you, for whatever reason, can't fit real fruit into your, into your diet, then yeah, that would be a route to go. Um, 
but if if I, I would say if you're having trouble fitting that into your diet, like the only situation where I see you can't fit re the real fruit into your diet would be maybe number one, a time thing. It's just not a priority enough for you to make time for it. Or if you're like deep, deep, deep into a cut and, uh, and preparing for a show or something like that, I could see you not being able to fit fruit in there. But for most of us, for 99% of us, there's absolutely no reason why you couldn't fit whole fruit into your standard diet, whether you're cutting or bulking. And uh, yeah, so I would say the, the fruit powders, the, 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 the vitamin, mineral, fruit, veggie powders, whatever, I think those are great if you are getting deep into a cut and need to conserve calories for other things. But um, I, I personally would rather take the whole fruit and... Uh, uh, because you're just gonna get you're gonna get so much more from the actual fruit being in its natural form, like it's designed to be eaten. It's designed to digest a certain way because it has all the different um, fibers mixed in with it, all the different uh, sugars mixed with it, all the different vitamins and minerals that are with it. They are all there to help it be absorbed, you know, the way that it was intended to be. So taking away those things from it. Um, it's just not the same. It's just not going to be the same using a powder or a juice as opposed to having the actual fruit. That's my thoughts on it. I would, I would, I would choose the fruit every single time over, you know, a supplement when it's permittable. So I'm planning on keeping my training program steady for at least a few years and working on progressive overload. Any thoughts? I mean, that's smart. We should always be working towards progressive overload. Absolutely. I mean, I think that that's, that, that's like the standard that should be always the main goal of every like training program when you're trying to grow. Absolutely. So. Yeah. How badly does 20 to 25 milligrams of Anovar affect HDL, LDL? Um, minimally, <laughs> you know, uh, there, there are way worse things out there that crush it even more. Um, but yeah, Anovar is, is, uh, when you've got other things in place, like azetamibe, um, you know, you really don't notice much from it. But again, HDL, LDL is, is gonna, is gonna be more so dependent on how much cardio you're doing and what your diet looks like. Yeah, yeah, so... DECA is kind of confusing. There are people who say it's safe to compound. And then there are those that say it's one of the harshest. Well, yeah, like every, you'll, you know, you can, you can find that for every product. It just depends, it depends on who you're asking. You know, if you ask the guy that has a lot of muscle and is very big, you know, uh, like for me personally, um, being 240, 250, relatively lean, you know, not contest shape, of course. You know, we already know where I go when it's contest time. Um, but for me, like where I'm at, where I've been for the past few years, 240, relatively lean. Um, if you asked me about any drug, any, any of them, I would probably say it's fine. Like, when I first started using gear, I thought everything was fucking... Everything gave me weird uh, effects. But you can't... You can't... You can't really judge the product based on your first times using it. Um, because it's just completely 100% new to you. You know, I've been using everything for, like, for so long... I don't really notice much of anything from anything, you know, because this is life now. Whereas if you ask somebody that's brand new to it and the first time that they used it, they'll be like, oh, don't do it. It's fucking terrible. Uh, it, like, and then you also have to consider, like, how often was that person doing injections? Was that person injecting every day or was he doing it based on the decanoate ester and injecting one time a week? Like, those people will probably be like, it's fucking terrible, you know? So there, there's just so many different variables that... You ask any person 
about any drug, you're going to get a whole bunch of conflicting opinions. And basically, most people tend to just listen to the thing that they want to hear, which is, yes, it's good. So um, it is confusing to ask about all different drugs. And my um, recommendation is that with any new drug that you've never used, my recommendation is just use a low fucking dose and dose it daily. Use a super low dose to start out and use it daily and you're going to have the best experience that you could possibly have with it doing that as opposed to the worst possible experience and listening to everybody else and do what they do and say the people that say 600 milligrams a deca is the minimum and then you take 600 milligrams a deca and dose it one time a week you're going to have a really bad fucking time with that so yeah, it, with any new drug that you introduce into your program, my recommendation is use the lowest dose possible and inject it every single day, you know. So with something like DECA, DECA usually, I feel, is dosed at about 300 milligrams per milliliter. I would say that would be a fine place to start one milliliter every week of DECA and I would split it up across seven days. And you're probably going to have a fine time with it. You're not going to experience a whole lot of side effects, most likely, as long as you've got uh, testosterone in place at an equal or higher dose. Um, so, like, if you were trying to use DECA and be as safe as fucking possible with it, I would use 300 tests, 300 DECA, spread that out across the week, you know, um, you'll probably, if you're injecting daily, that mixing those together, that would probably be about um, a quarter of a milliliter every day, you know, because uh, if you're doing a milliliter of a product, that's going to be like 0 0.14 or 1.3 uh, milliliters every single day. So... Yeah, that's about half of a quarter of a milliliter. Um, so you're doing two products. You do that. I bet you would have a, a fine time with it. Braden, I already answered that question. Just pay attention when I'm talking and you'll know the answers. <laughs> um, so, yeah. What look are these people talking about? I think I look okay on 500 tests. Not like I do when I add trend and Anavar, but I don't look like a complete poop. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like I said, it's all in people's head. <laughs> like, we're fucking stupid as it is. <laughs> like, so many of us are, are brain fucked by drugs that, you know, when you're new to this stuff, you're like, oh, this is great. Like, when you're, when you're pro-drug, <laughs> like, you're gonna think that different drugs are just doing all awesome things, and if you're just using tests, eh, it's not that great. I think it's just all in their fucking head. Like, 500 tests can absolutely make somebody look great. Um, it's going to be more dependent, again, on your nutrition and your training than the drugs that you're using, so I wouldn't stress it. Some say you can't afford Primo. You can use EQ. Instead, no. EQ is kidney toxic. That's, that's the real problem with EQ, is that it's kidney toxic. It's kidney to toxic, and it raises hematocrit higher than anything else. And one is because of the other, <laughs> you know. Uh, EQ will absolutely blast your hematocrit up more so than anything else. So, you know, if you're going to use EQ, you absolutely need to have a blood pressure medication in place before using it. Um, yeah, it, it, the, the difference between EQ and, and Primo, they are not the same. Uh, you, the, 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 I've never heard that. Um, I've heard, I've heard you can swap out master on with Primo and I would agree a little more with that, but EQ and Primo, no, they're, they're completely different, completely different products. EQ is a horse drug. Primo was made for people. It's just, they're not even in the same, they're not even in the same field. So what look are, oh, uh, already did that. Did Marcus Rule take Tell Me Sartan? I have no idea. I haven't seen a Marcus Rule video. I haven't even seen Marcus Rule in like five years. I only want to do what he did. <laughs> yeah, well, good luck with that, troll. 
what about the ones who start gear at 40? They never, they've never taken it before. I would say don't. I would say it's. Uh, I would say if you're gonna start at 40, you need to you need to be on low doses. Like if you're gonna be blasting and cruising, starting at 40, I think it's stupid. And yes, I think that that will absolutely take years off your life, significant years off your life. What do you think about using insulin without GH? Uh, only if you're using L-carnitine, and that's the primary reason for using L-carnitine. Is it worth to throw in a couple IUs with your high-carb post-workout meal? Um, it depends how your insulin sensitivity is. <laughs> you know? I mean, your own insulin can probably handle it just fine. Um, the thing is, is taking insulin, taking insulin in therapeutic doses does not put on more muscle. Insulin has only shown to build muscle, to be anabolic... To be anabolic when abused, when using amounts of carbs that your own insulin probably couldn't keep up with, and using amounts of insulin that is way more than what your body would produce in one lump sum. So, dosing small amounts of insulin with your food is not going to is not going to do more than what your own body could do. Keep those store-bought rapid tests on hand. Where can you buy those? I don't even know. Where can you buy the... Where can you where, where can you get those store... Does CVS or like Walgreens sell those? Like, I don't know. Because um, I wouldn't... I wouldn't mind... Uh, I wouldn't mind having one. Does anybody know? I, I don't know. I haven't looked into all of it enough. Some say that EQ is a waste. All it does is increasing your hunger and raising blood pressure and taking your E2 and tanking your E2, so no gains. I mean, it doesn't tank your E2 as long as you're on a significant dose of testosterone. Um, and, I mean, yeah. It, I don't think it's a complete waste. It's just, like, there's a time and a place to use it. But yes, it is, it is, it is kidney toxic. And that's a reason to not use it the only reason I see to use something like EQ is if you're trying to go pro. If you're not trying to go pro, you do not need that shit. Thoughts on Nano Q10 taken orally as a way to replace CoQ10 pills, which most of it we don't absorb anyway. I take Ubiquinol. I have not heard of nano q10 uh, i don't know i take ubiquinol um so sorry that that's what i take going on gears legit made me a ton has made me a ton of spare money i made a grinder account all right um dude i'm sorry but like nobody nobody cares <laughs> like you you've been you've been standing out as way more of a troll lately than than adding to the conversations like do you want do you are you trying like i understand people wanting attention and and wanting to you know uh, try to get me to address them by stupid things that they say like i i get it but when that's all that you do is just like troll and troll and troll, all what it makes me want to do is block you. So my question to you is, do you want to be blocked or do you want to stop trolling and, and, and just listen and, and, you know, read the comments and maybe add to the comments instead of just throwing out random crap of, of, of bullshit. So like what, what, what would you like me to do? Do you want to be blocked or do you want to add to the conversations? Because literally everything that has come up under your name in the last two days has just, has just been crap that nobody cares about, nobody wants to hear, and it sounds like you're just really wanting attention. So do you want attention or, or you know, do you want to 
contribute. Because what we're doing in here is trying to contribute. <laughs> I don't care if they're real stories. Nobody wants to hear this shit. Nobody cares, man. Nobody, nobody cares about this. And it's been consistent the past couple days. Like, I don't care if it's true. Nobody else cares if it's true. If you want attention now, you've got it. And you're about to get blocked. It's just weird as fuck. I mean, that's all that it is. So... Do you want to keep doing this? Or do you want to contribute? Because you're not contributing. You're not. I saw your video on pomegranate and how it can lower high blood pressure. Um, pomegranate, um, not that it lowers high blood pressure. Pomegranate helps break down plaque in the arteries. And through that, it can cause lower blood pressure. It does taste a little weird, though. Had the idea that maybe powder could be the way to go. Um, since I could mix it with pre and repa replace cola. Um, um, I, I mean... That's kind of an option for that reason. Um, I would still just go with the pomegranate juice. I mean, the thing is, is that it's not... It takes a while of consistently having pomegranate juice every day for it to be very effective. You would be better off if, if you're trying to get those results from it. If you're trying to get uh, lower blood pressure results from pomegranate juice, I mean, you're better off. You're better off just picking... Like if you're if you're trying to like the thing with pomegranate juice again is that it lowers plaque in the arteries. There are better ways to do that. There there are better ways to go about doing that. Like you could use tell me sartan and azetamibe and a low dose statin, and that's going to be way more effective than pomegranate juice ever will be. So, um, yeah, uh, I wouldn't stress the pomegranate juice. The pomegranate juice is like if you're 1,000% against using any drugs at all, which is kind of stupid considering everybody in here is on steroids anyway for the most part. So if you're using steroids, if you're using that drug and okay with it, you should be okay with using things like tell me sartan, azetamibe, and you know if if like those are going to be enough. But if like you go and get a test and they show that you're like 60% blockage, then I would throw in a low dose statin as well. So, so yeah, I mean, I, if you're a natty, <laughs> if you're a natty, then yeah, uh, do go the pomegranate juice route. But if you're not, then I, I wouldn't bother with it. I haven't bothered with pomegranate juice in a while. So, um, you know, it's not something that I drink or even use anymore uh, because I have these other things in place um, that are way more effective at what pomegranate juice would do. Does the amount of oil you inject every day account for the amount of fat you need per day? It definitely is uh, metabolized. <laughs> it's not anything that I think anybody actually counts. Um, but it is true. Uh, it does. It is essentially something that your body is going to use as calories. So, but nobody like pays attention to that. I mean, if you want to know how many grams of fat you're getting through your gear, fill your syringe up, put it on the scale, weigh it, take your syringe off, inject it, put the empty, put the empty syringe and needle back on the scale and see what it weighs. And the difference will be how many grams of fat you injected. So, How much do you think you spend annually on blood tests? Yeah, I already answered that. Probably about $1,500 a year. Uh, do we need to cut down on protein intake if the intake is just while taking astragalus? No, you can keep it. You can keep it where it is. That doesn't matter. Tommy Carton? <laughs> Tell me Sartan? Bro, look through the... look. <laughs> Look through the chat. People have said tell me Sartan in here. <laughs> Tommy Carton? Come on, man. Just look through the chat. Like, you, you scroll up. 
I mean, fuck. Just, just read the chat. Like, somebody has said, tell me Sartan in here. Somewhere. I already know. There it is. <laughs> like, come on, man. <laughs> it's right, it's right there. Just scroll through the chat and you'll find it. Tell me Sartan. Come on. Tell Milk Carton. <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, huh. um, if I want to use three different compounds, can I put a weekly dose in a 10 milliliter vial that I already, that I used already and pin daily? Yes, it makes perfect sense. That's what this is. This is an old Masteron vial, and I filled it up with my four compounds uh, in the weekly dosages that I need in there, and I inject this every day. Like, this is, this is exactly what you're talking about. That's what I do. Yes, it's totally fine. Nothing wrong with that at all. EQ is kidney toxic. EGFR and creatinine is always good for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Would you say the best injectable muscle builders in order along with a good diet and training are test deck a trend and primo no <laughs> um i would leave I, if you're focusing primarily on sh just straight straight muscle building i mean with with health not being a concern test deca I mean, test and DECA combined in, in large doses is going to be the best bulker that there is with food in place, training in place. Test and DECA, you're going to get the most bang for your buck, but you're probably going to, uh, you're probably going to, you know, it, using test and primo is going to be way better for your health long term than a bunch of test and DECA. And I, I'd be willing to bet that the test and DECA will get you more sheer mass, you know, because you can prevent a decent amount of bloat, but you can't prevent all bloat, especially, you know, depending on your dose. Um, you know, Tren is, is not a great muscle builder. It is good at, uh, it is good at preventing, uh, protein breakdown, but I don't feel that it's a great muscle builder at all. Um, so I would say test and Deca would be the ultimate, and and then from there I would add in D ball, <laughs> and uh, and Anadrol. <laughs> like those would be the top four when strictly muscle gains is all that you care about, and uh, and you don't uh, and, and you don't care about your health. Like if you're in the off season and you want to get as big as fucking possible, Test Deca and D ball is gonna be the one that blows you the fuck up, but you will not be seeing me actually doing that anytime ever, ever again. So, um, but again, like at the end of the day, you really can only build about a pound of real lean tissue per month. Um, regardless of what you use, that being said, you can absolutely get more strength, um, from getting more bloat and fat on, uh, different drugs than other drugs. But at the end of the day, when you actually cut, when you actually cut, um, you're probably not going to see that much of a difference. If you would have went a healthier route, you might be a little bit stronger at the end of the day, but strength doesn't equal size. And if you think that that's true, go watch the Olympics, go watch the uh, weightlifting Olympics, go watch any powerlifting meet, and watch how the guys that are much smaller than you in those lighter weight classes, much smaller than me and you, and watch them lift more than you and tell me that strength equals size. You know, I mean, that's just a, a pure example that strength does not equal size at all. <clears throat> Let's say you have two pull workouts. Would it be better to have different exercises on them or the same ones? It would be better to have variety. Variety is better.
ZQ, more kidney toxic than Tren? I would say yes. I didn't know EQ was kidney toxic. Uh, yeah. Warzone review, worth trying. I, I think Warzone's good. Yeah, no, I like Warzone. Um, I have been using that more than Total War lately, actually. Uh, just in the afternoons. Um, I think Warzone is very good. Yeah, it, it's like a, a slight combination of Warzone and Big Noise without the pump stuff. Like, Big Noise has focusing agents in it, um, whereas, whereas uh, Total War is just straight-up energy. Um, Warzone is kind of a mix of the two. Warzone has caffeine in it, but it also has focusing agents in it. It just doesn't have anything for pump. So um, I think Warzone's great. Uh, it's, it's probably one of my newest, like, favorite new products that um, um, Redcon has come out with. So, I'll stop. It's your business. I don't want to infringe on it. I just thought it'd be funny. It's not funny, though. You know, that's, that's the problem is, like, I appreciate people being in here, but, like, the thing is, is, like, you're trying to be funny, and it just comes off as really weird and awkward. Like, there hasn't been one, because, like, I remember you posting yesterday. Like, I, I, there just hasn't been one where I was just like, ha, 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 ha. Like, it's just all been... Okay, that's fucking weird. Okay, I don't, I don't need to hear that. I don't want to hear that. So, I'm glad that I've helped you out a lot. I, I don't want to kick you out of here, but I, my recommendation to you is stop trying to be funny and just be normal. <laughs> we don't need to hear uh, of experiences that you, you know, put into the chat that has nothing to do with anything. Is Ubiquinol really worth it compared to regular COQ? Um, I would say yes, that's what everybody recommends. That's kind of the standard nowadays that people have been, um, have been, have been touting is, is what to, to use. Um, I use 200 milligrams in the AM and PM. I take a dose in the morning and I take a dose at night. <laughs> I'm natty trying to get off propranolol, which is a, a beta blocker. Uh, I'm looking what I could stop to add to my diet to regulate blood pressure. Well, if you're going to switch from pro, propranolol to anything, it would be nabivolol. Um, they're pretty equal. Uh, they're, they're, they're both beta blockers. So if you're going to stop that, I would say go to nabivolol because nabivolol has been shown to not impede on exercise performance. So if I was going to do anything, I would switch to that. You know, um, yeah. Tell milk carton. That, that, that's good. See, now that's funny. <laughs> um, my bad. I just kind of joined. Yeah. Uh, honestly, I think you'll be okay. You think it'll be okay? I'll be okay to leave 18 gauge in the rubber stopper. Bro. Yes. <laughs> All of my vials have an 18 gauge in it. <laughs> yes. I've been doing this for... Seven years, I've always just left it in there, never had a problem. Yes, this is what I do. This vial, this vial, <laughs> this vial, and that's all the vials I have under there. Yes, if I'm using a vial, it's got a fucking 18 gauge sticking out of it. I've always done it that way. People were like, mm, just. Why can't you afford 18 gig? I, I, I don't care. I've done it for, uh, like I said, at least the last seven years. I've never had an infection problem. I've never had an issue with it. And it's, uh, think of it as, uh, I'm throwing away less needles. I'm recycling. I'm being better for the environment. Um, and it saves me fucking time. Because at the end of the day, when you're doing as many injections as guys like me are doing, it, it's a fucking tedious process, and it's one less thing that I have to deal with, and it's not causing me any issues, and I'm confident that it wouldn't cause you any issues as well. So people that want to complain about that, I don't care. It's, it, I, it's not going to change anything that I do, because, again, I've never, ever, ever had a problem with reusing my uh, 18 gauges that I draw with. So if you've got a problem with it, Fuck off. I don't care. <laughs> um, when coming off a blast and following your protocol 
of not injecting for weeks and then going on to your TV notice any joint pain? No, never. So I could gain only about one pound per month on 500 tests and five. Um, no, I would say you probably can't gain a pound per month on just 500 tests. Um, it, depending on where you're at, like, let's say you are a 220 pound bodybuilder. That's uh, relatively lean. I would say on 500 tests per week, you're probably not going to gain a pound uh, a month, but on 500 tests and 500 deca, you probably will. So it just depends on where you're at. If you are, say, 170 pounds relatively lean, then yeah, 500 tests will give you um, that result. And 500 tests and 500 deca will be overkill. So, all right, guys. Um, so um, my side effects from my sickness is creeping up on me. <laughs> and if you watched from the start... Um, you would know that I have the shits and I'm feeling that right now and I need to go. So, um, I'm sorry. We've been on for an hour and 40 minutes. Um, but I'm not bullshitting. I'm just shitting. So I, I need to go. I need to get off of here and go take care of that. So I, I know it's disgusting, but it's the truth. And that's what I do in here is tell the truth. So I'm going to get off of here. I'm sorry. I didn't get to all your guys' questions, but I, I got to go. So, Thank you, everybody, for coming in and chatting with me. This was good today. Um, I'll see you guys tomorrow. I'll be on the same time tomorrow, about noonish Central Standard Time. But I got to go. So thanks, everybody. I will see you all tomorrow.